the recording and I've just um, promoted Bob to panelists so he can uh, he can go over his budget request with you. Hello, Bob. Welcome. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Indeed. Okay. Let me see if you can see me too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I won't hold you to that. I like no. to go incognito sometimes, Bob. So don't worry about it. But there you are. Right. Hello. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Bob. Everyone sounds tired. I'm. I feel tired too. <laughs> <laughs> So, Bob, you're up first. Okay. <laughs> lucky well, I assume uh, you all have a copy of the library's budget. Yes. And uh, I think that most of you have uh, are familiar with the budgeting process for the library from past years. I know that Janet is, having, being a former trustee. Um, <laughs> still waiting. Uh, to Julie hear. might need a little bit of a. Yes. Okay. Well. Uh, the important things uh, uh, from our standpoint is the um, appropriation requirement that uh, is required uh, for us to receive certification in state aid. Um, so it's an average of the last three years appropriation and there's a formula that goes along with that. Um, so that's a that's really where we start the library's budgeting process. And uh, there have been some changes to the process due to COVID. Um, the spending requirement for materials has been uh, kind of uh, uh, waived. Um, and also the hours that the library building is required to be open. So we obviously, uh, the building itself has not been open, but we're still considered to be open uh, as we do operate as best we can around, you know, doing curbside service and uh, doing Zoom, uh, doing uh, virtual uh, programming. But, but they're not requiring any opening, any official opening hours right now? Uh, well, we're considered to be open our regular hours right now, even though the building isn't open. Okay. Uh, we're operating as best we can and um, I think um, I've been going, uh, uh, I've been uh, following what our neighbor libraries are doing and all the libraries in our network and all the libraries in Massachusetts um, to see, um, you know, to follow the guidance. The Mass Board of Library Commissioners are constantly updating their guidance for what libraries should be uh, following. And um, so there are a few local libraries that are open by appointment. Clinton is open by appointments, but just recently uh, they're rethinking that. There have some, been some libraries that have opened by appointment that are now closed. Um, so we haven't yet opened by appointment. We don't see a big advantage uh, versus the risk right now yeah. uh, to being open. So, um, so that's, that's where we stand there. Um, in terms of our budget, um, we were, you know, level funding. So I think as you can see, we, we, we stuck to that. And I think that will be okay in terms of meeting our appropriation requirement as far as that goes. Um, Bob, I can tell you there's not gonna be any disparity between, I know there, there are issues when there's a disparity between the library and other departments. There isn't yes. going to be that on the okay. municipal side. Okay. Yeah. Another part of the uh, certification process is that um, the library as a department does not get, uh, our funding does not get uh, cut uh, disproportionate to other library department, uh, other town departments. So mm -hmm. uh, that, that's one of the, um, things that we have to meet for a certification. So I am constantly uh, asking uh, Margaret <laughs> about that, especially last year. And uh, so it'll be, uh, you know, we're, we're kind of all waiting. The state budget process uh, was obviously went on further, uh, longer than, than ever. And so we won't know, uh, at the end of this month, we should know uh, whether we uh, met the certification. 
uh, process. There were a lot of communities that had to apply for a, a waiver, mm -hmm. which is something you can do if you um, have a good uh, argument as to why you didn't meet the, the requirements. So, um, in terms of our, uh, that's, uh, you know, speaking about our operating budget, in terms of our capital items, um, we, we do have a few that are still open, uh, the well, the septic, uh, which are kind of related. And um, we have a design plan that's been an open capital item for many years, simply because we, we, there's a lot of things that we've been attempting to do to either renovate the library or uh, if needed, uh, try to go for a new library building. And um, so that's been a long ongoing process. Uh, this is my eighth year as a director. And uh, so <laughs> it's been going on uh, uh, since well before that. And uh, so these, this new septic and well, uh, trying to address our issues there is all part of that process as well. And then we have a couple of uh, capital items for general repairs and it's, uh, Mainly we have those just because uh, the highway department's budget may or may not have enough funds to cover, you know, a, an antiquated building like ours, 1928 building, uh, some of the repairs that we might require. So we like to, and, and we have, uh, have used that on a regular basis just to do, you know, we, we needed a new roof since I've been here, new windows, new fire alarm system, uh, et cetera, so. Uh, are there any specific questions that uh, any of you have about the budget? I don't, Bob. Okay. Um, as I said, what what I what I uh, sent to all of you all, what I sent actually to uh, to June and to to Margaret, um, would have been sort of a breakdown our spreadsheet of where where we estimate that all of these. Uh, expense, money for expenses and wages would be going. So um, a lot of these uh, categories uh, for expenses are kind of morph into different things. You know, for example, DVDs, you know, that may be something that uh, we'll be changing into more of a streaming or, you know, so, and uh, we may be spending more money on our ebook e uh, collection, things like that. So, but uh, if you if you find if you're looking at the budget and find that you have questions, I'm available always to uh, address anything. Through, through the chair. Yes. I or raise my head. <laughs> like I'm in a room. <laughs> I'll never get over that. <laughs> no, um, I just want to add to, um, uh, to a couple of things that Bob mentioned. Well, to one thing that Bob mentioned, this library septic. So you may or may not know that we went out uh, for bids back in. Oh gosh, I, I want to say August, um, and unfortunately, we had to reject all bids in the interest of the town. Um, so we recently went out. We re, we recently reissued bids. Uh, those are due in January. We do. Ex I do expect um, the bids to come in less than the amount that was appropriated for the project, possibly significantly less than the amount that was appropriated for the project. So um, I'll keep you posted on that. The deadline to submit bids uh, this round is January 28th. And then the other thing that I just wanted to note is on the wages, and you're going to see this, this is going to be a recurring thing. So um, in the budget memo, we asked that um, all departments submit wages at level funded amounts from FY21, um, knowing that the HR consultant was working on their study and we did not have the personnel committee's recommendation on COLA at that point. Um, two, as you know, two of the library employees um, have already seen market rate adjustments. Those are not reflected in the budget submission that you have before, the budget request that you have before you. Those are going to have to be adjusted on the budget worksheet. So um, Bob is aware of the market rate adjustments that have been made. There could potentially be additional market rate adjustments for 
positions in the library and other departments um, pending the review of the HR consultants class and comp plan. So those are the only two things that I, I wanted to make sure I noted. So, and, and Margaret, um, the uh, you had a note from from back in the middle of December that this that these adjustments would be through the made through the contingency line. That's correct. Yes. Uh, fund that we've got set up. Yes. Okay. Okay. So that covers FY21. So the adjustments for FY22 obviously will not be coming from the contingency line. Uh, but we'll be on budget. Ah, okay, okay. There won't be a con there's not going to be a contingency. Well, we don't think at this point there's going to be a contingency line in FY22. Not yet. We'll see. Right. I always get I get confused with the years. So we're halfway through fiscal 21, and that means we are. That means that the adjustments that you wrote about in December and the contingency is for the 21 part. That's correct. Yeah. Um, but but then. The budget that we're the budget request form doesn't reflect these personnel committee adjustments. Is that right? That is absolutely correct. Okay. Yeah, these oh, were done so. before any of that. All right, all right. So down and, the road. And I'm sorry. Did you also say that these are are these retro back to the beginning of 21 or this is no no they they were effective January one this year, 2021. And are you going to fix the budget moving? Yeah. Forward. We're going to, yeah, um, we'll make notes. We'll actually do a spreadsheet showing all the personnel adjustments separately. That way it'll be easy. We're not going to bother to change all the budget requests. We'll just do a spreadsheet that shows everything. Okay. Now I know you're, well, we're just talking about this. I, I was able to find everything earlier and then I put myself on and now I'm like lost. I'm in my budget and I uh, see my spreadsheets and I see drafts, but when I open them, I'm not seeing. You can't see the spreadsheet itself. Well, I can, but I don't see the library on it. <laughs> oh, oh you'd have to scroll way down. Janet, there's another folder that has budget requests in it. Maybe you need to back out and get to another folder. That's where I found the library. So, so I went to where it said, uh, "Click the link." Folder. Janet, can you it. share? Can you share your screen? Me? Yeah. If you share, can you share that? I'm sorry. Yeah, I can, but I just got out of it. So I, let me just. Well, or if you tell me what you're trying to pull up. All right, I so I, I'm on the budget spreadsheets. Yeah. And then I see budget uh, FY22 forms and memos. I'm, I've opened that folder, but when I open the spreadsheet, I get FY21 and then FY22 drafts. Yeah, FY22 am I, drafts. Am I right? Yeah, FY22 drafts, it's in there. That's where the budget spreadsheet, the working budget yeah, spreadsheet is. I, I open that and then I see two different, there's two different sheets mm -hmm. and I'm clicking on the one on the left, which is copy of FY22 draft, right? The date should be 1-5-2021. That's the one. That's the most current. 1-5-20, I have 1-5-2020. Oh, that's my, that's my fault. It takes me a few tries before I get the year right. Am I right or wrong? That's no, where I'm confused. No, just just click on that one. That's actually 2021. I can change oh, that. So it goes oh, chronologically. All right. So I'm looking at the right one. I'm thinking I'm looking at FY. It says 22, but it says 20. So I didn't know if I what I was doing. Sorry. I can just I can rename it. I that's okay. I just wanted to make sure I was on the right one. That's the right one. Okay. Sorry. That, no, that's okay. I have to get my ears right. I, I, I'm pretty good now. It's already the sixth. <laughs> well, it said 2020. It didn't even say 21. So I was like, what? I'm, I'm obviously not on the right page. <laughs> and it starts off with the levy, right? Local property tax use. That's the first. The summary sheet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you go into the, okay. All right. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure I was right. Yeah. Okay. Oh. All right. Um, any more questions for Bob? Uh, just oh, June's on now. That this would be helpful. I I looked at the. Uh, the budget summary request form from the library and there was some back and forth between Bob and June and I don't 
know whether we need to know anything about that or whether there's anything that either one of you wants to say about. Um, I think I think it was regarding the uh, Anna Hunt phone. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I um, I just have never been a uh, hundred percent sure how this fund is working. So each year we do get some small appropriation from it. I think it's existed for a very long time, certainly before I started. And uh, so I'm never really aware. I don't know if it happens at town meeting. You know, I think that this year we're, we're not getting anything from the fund. Is that right, June? Yes, that is yeah, correct. So, you know, last year I didn't include anything because I wasn't aware we were getting anything. And this year, I think I included $50, which is what we got last year. And so, but in any case, I think that's the only thing we were discussing. Okay. Um, so I think we were also I think discussing. Barry, I think, I think I, maybe I could speak to Barry, you said, um, regarding this fund and maybe I'll, mm -hmm. in the future, I'll be more aware of whether, <laughs> whether it, there is still anything in it. I think we know what's in it, but we just don't know what might be appropriated in addition, uh, you know, to 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 uh, to our appropriation from the fund. But yeah, it is Barry, kind of suggest. it is kind of petering out, I think. Yep. Just, yeah. yeah, I had also made a comment that we needed to relook at the revolving fund that you have for the um, that you have for copies. Right, um, and well, that also needs to be looked at, relooked at, because technically, unless it, it's technically only supposed a revolving fund is only supposed to have receipts that go into it. That's to fund the actual purpose of the receipt. So right. technically speaking, before when it used to be for like lost books, and um, I think you used to use it for copies and purchasing paper or something like that. So it worked. It was an in and an out type of a thing. Right. Um, but right now, I don't believe it's being used for the the newer version of a, what a revolving fund is for. So it needs to be relooked at. Okay. I was just trying to do it ahead of time, but it didn't happen. So we'll have to relook at it for next year. Right. So just to make everyone aware, the revolving fund was created um, to collect. We we the library still collects money from fines. If it's our patrons and it's our material, then we don't, there is no fine. As long as they return the book, um, you know, if, if they lose the book, then there would be a cost for the lost item. And that money would go into the revolving. Um, and then we used to charge for a faxing. We no longer charge for a fax. Uh, we do voice, we do fax over internet now. So there's really no reason to charge uh, people for our fax. And we charge for copies. Uh, it's 10 cents a copy, same as it was in 1970 when the library got their first copy machine. <laughs> uh, so no inflation there. So, but the monies that go in revolving, um, they, they pretty much would be used for, you know, what the fine was collected for. So they would be going to expenses for materials. Um, but I don't know exactly what the law is re regarding that type of fund, but we, we rarely use it. We do collect the money, it goes into revolving. Um, we have, I don't have it right in front of me. I think we have a few thousand dollars at least in this revolving fund. And it has come in handy, say at the end of the year, we run out of our appropriation and we get a bill that has to be paid uh, after the start of the new fiscal year. We've used it a few times to pay those uh, expenses. Uh, but I don't think we've ever spent a significant amount of money from the revolving fund in the eight years that I've been here. It's been like maybe a few hundred dollars. So we're maybe have in the future, a lot of libraries are doing away with fines entirely. Mm -hmm. So we may consider doing that. Yeah, because that kind of um, that kind of deviates from the the true um, the well the true purpose um, of a revolving fund, where you take fees in for services and then um, the monies are spent related to those services. So it's not 
so that one's not really well defined. So that is something that we'll have to look into. Right. Fines that are related to the Berlin Library. Right. You, you, wait, you can waive that. But then if somebody got a book like through an interlibrary loan and was late. Exactly. Yeah, we can't waive that. So we have to collect that money. So the way it works in the network is, mm -hmm. you know, the people would pay their fine to us. But if there's a lost item, they would they would have to deal with that with the library, uh, you know, who owned that item. Okay, but that money you handle differently. That's that doesn't go through. No. This. Okay. no. And and there's also another twist to this where uh, the network, if people pay by credit card which they can do online. They can't do it in any specific library, but they can pay online. And there's a, a mechanism that the network collects the money and sends a check to us. That also goes in the revolving fund. So we do need a place, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, the money goes to the town. The, the town has a revolving fund and the library is allowed to spend $1,000 per year uh, from this fund which we have never approached doing. But we have used some monies from it to pay some expenses in, in some years. But it's been very limited. But I think what June is saying is that there are specific rules governing this money and that we need to make sure that we, if we spend money from that, that, that you know, we follow the rules. Right? Am I right? Yes, that's correct. All right. June, the rule follower. I know, I know. <laughs> I mean, well, they keep changing the rules. That's the only problem. They do, unfortunately, with this one. When the modernization um, came out, they made it so that they were a lot more strict as far as as what it was that it needs to be used for. So well, we used to get like the uh, we used to get the dog tag, the dog money too. Yeah. Yeah. That we that. They pretty much right. phased that out. So yeah. all libraries across Mass would always get the dog money. I'm not sure why that started. Yeah, that was always such a joke at our meetings, Bob, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, it was the dog the dog money. Do we still getting the dog money? We were one of the last holdouts to still be getting the dog money. No, they actually did away with the, the, the whole to the state thing. They did. Yep. Yeah. All righty, well, if no one else has anything else for Bob, I guess we would move on. How's the grandbaby, Bob? Very good. I have two now. Oh, no, really? How oh, yes. little one? Oh, no, is that they're, they're all with us. One big happy family. Ah. Well, congratulations. Four. Happy New Year. Four years old and one year old. Oh, wow. Yeah, I can't wait to go home. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right, Bob, I, I see your car at the library every day, Bob. You know, a, a lot of people have mentioned that throughout COVID, I soldiered on and I came to the library every day. Uh -huh. I had no work from home for me. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, Bob. Okay, you're welcome. If you have, have any questions, further questions, just let me know. Thank you, Bob. Now you know where to find you. Okay, I'm leaving. Bye. Bye, Bob. All right, have good a good night. night. Good night. Thank you. You too. Okay. All right, Margaret, do we have... Let me, uh, let me just do... Uh, I'm going to promote Chris Kefis here for the board. I'm going to promote her to panelists, and I'll just go over my... One, my budget, um, 123 real quick, and then we can just dive into um, to select board. Um, salary is a contractual salary. Um, you may recall that um, I kind of led the charge last year on um, asking contracted employees to freeze their salaries. So um, the three of us contracted employees um, did so. Um, what this adjustment would do in FY22 
is over the three year period, there would be a net um, reduction of $2,000 in that, in that third year uh, payment. So the, over the three year contract, um, the amount paid out is $2,000 less in the end. Um, the, let's see, uh, contracted services. I have picked up the cost of um, the shredding service for the town. Uh, for whatever reason, the fire department used to pick up that cost for the town. Um, so I'm assuming that cost. Um, I've budgeted $55 for 100 stamps. <laughs> I've, my office supplies, I've reduced by $500 because honestly, my office, as basic as it is, it is set up and I really don't need huge anything. So I've reduced that by $500. Um, my travel expenses, I've reduced by $200. I do expect that um, it's going to be a little while before we go to um, in-person uh, meetings and seminars again. Um, my dues I've increased by by fifty dollars because um, every year um, our dues I, I belong to mass managers, um, small town administrators, um, um, and that's it actually. But the dues costs go up every year. Um, meetings. This is tied to travel. I I don't see us. Um, going to uh, live in-person uh, meetings uh, for at least the start of the fiscal year and other expenses I've kept level funded. Does anybody have any questions? No, I, it looks it looks good, Margaret, and I appreciate what you've done on your own compensation because it, uh, it, it sets a tone that I think has been very helpful. Yes, agreed. Yes. Uh -huh. We're also, but but at the same time, we do, thank you. I, I appreciate that. And I, but at the same time, we do see the effects of, um, of um, the economy on um, uh, bargaining. We do have a uh, department that is organizing um, and uh, for a collective bargaining agreement. So this is new. Um, so I don't want to, um, I don't want to, uh, kind of speculate on on all the reasons for it, but it tends to happen um, when things are tight. So, all right, Chris, are you here? Yes. W would you like me to, to start on the select board? Yes, that'd be great. Okay. So the select board will start with the wages on the select board. Um, the select board voted um, or, or the consent of the select board on Monday night was to keep their elected salaries line level funded. So that will not be increased in FY22. Uh, the full-time wages line, um, that's the administrative assistant to the town administrator. Uh, that would, that's going to show, reflect the 2% increase recommended by the personnel committee. Um, as we discussed before with Bob's, um, with the library, uh, those increases are not reflected in these budget request forms. So that's gonna be a separate spreadsheet we prepare. Um, under consulting, you might recall last year, we separated uh, consulting costs from um, legal expenses. So uh, Weston and Sampson, for example, does some uh, licensed site professional work for the town. Um, they used to be paid from the legal expense line, which really wasn't the appropriate place to pay consulting from. So um, the separate consulting line was established. Um, at the same time, the legal expense line and the board's expense line uh, were reduced to accommodate that consulting line. The town pays for contracted uh, trash removal in the center of town. Um, Hearing notices are sent for um, alcohol license hearings. Um, or, uh, I'm trying to think of the other hearings that you might do. Do you do earth, earthworks, poll, right? Poll, poll hearings. Poll hearings, yes. So there are a, a number of different hearings. So um, advertising um, and uh, mailings would be included in that. Um, Mary gets a cell phone uh, reimbursement. So that's the 360, uh, a partial cell phone reimbursement. I think it's half of her cell phone bill. So that's $360. Um, office supplies are all level funded for the coming year. Um, she does purchase a lot of the paper that goes into the copy room right now. There's, there's not a whole heck of a lot of use with copiers. So maybe we'll save a little money there. But, um, and then with travel and dues, I'm not, um, uh, dues. Okay. MMA. So the Mass Municipal Association is paid from the select board the, um, expense line. 
uh, travel would be for certain meetings um, out of town. Uh, so for example, if a board member had to go to the Neshoba Valley Regional Dispatch District meeting or something, uh, mileage could be charged. By the way, the mileage rate in, in uh, 2021 is down to 56 cents a mile, the business mileage from 57 and a half cents a mile. If anybody, if anyone cares. <laughs> Um, the next, all right, so we'll move on, we'll move on. We're gonna go right over to legal expenses. Um, I mentioned that there is going to be a new collective bargaining agreement um, and uh, that is going to take um, some, that is gonna take some uh, expense out of this year's um, legal services expense line. Uh, my expectation is once we execute an agreement, um, the um, the labor council services costs um, will be uh, will be reduced. That said, um, we are still uh, we are still trending within the budgeted amount. I don't expect that at this point. I do not expect that we're going to have to come to the finance committee uh, for any reserve fund transfers. I understand a couple of years ago there were um, there were some issues, um, but I don't I don't see that at this moment. So we're gonna level fund legal expense at the $50,000. So that's what we're requesting. Um, and then we're jumping all the way over to insurances. Pardon me, I have the paper in front of me, my giant binder. All right, first is workers comp. Um, we don't have a lot of recent uh, claims uh, with workers comp. We do expect a slight incre uh, increase in our premium cost for next year, but we underspent the line by a bit this year. We think that level funding will be able to absorb any increases in our premium for next year. Next. Yeah. Are we down to like 700, 107? Is that where we just jumped to? Where did we just uh, oh, I'm not on the. I'm not in the budget sheet. I'm sorry. I can't tell you the line. Oh. Um, you're way down though, uh, Janet. It's it's account number nine twelve. All the way at the end. Nine twelve. Okay. It's the very last section. Yeah, it's one oh seven, one oh eight, one oh nine. I'm trying to no. If you just look at the account number column, see nine twelve. Yeah. It's almost at the bottom. Okay. All right, the next is um, account 916, police and fire, sickness and accident. This is all for, I'm sure most of you are aware of this, but this all came about with um, the McNamara bill um, where there had to be coverage for uh, police and fire related injuries and death. Um, and so we are required to pay this. Um, I, I don't, um, we expect our premium again um, with any small increase to be within the budgeted amount. So we're not seeking any, um, any increase for premium costs in that line. And then finally, property and liability insurance. This is one, this is an interesting one. We're gonna, we're, gonna, we're looking at level funding it. Um, this year we spent, um, th this year we expended about a little over 90% of the uh, budget. Uh, not including the credits that we receive from our insurer. Um, we do think that with the small increase, um, a level funded budget will be able to cover, um, cover our premium costs next year. Um, that said, uh, over this past year, um, we have scrubbed our, um, our property schedules and our equipment schedules and have found a few things um, that had previously been missing from those schedules. So those have been added. So we are kind of, you know, our, our premium costs are bump, bumping up against the appropriation or the requested appropriation. Um, but I think that we'll still be, we'll still be okay for next year. So that's what we have at the moment with select board. <laughs> Any questions? So you don't, you don't do health because that, that's, uh, that's Dennis, right? That's you Dennis. Don't. Yeah. That's that's going to be Dennis, yeah. Any questions? About all your level funded budgets? No, I think we're, I think we're okay. <laughs> doesn't it make it, doesn't it make it somewhat easy? <sighs> um, so Margaret, should we talk, should we, inform the group at all about our discussion with Asabet and what we did. Clean I don't know if you'd like. 
Sure, if you'd like to do yeah, that. Yeah, so Margaret and I spoke to Asabeth as kind of a preliminary uh, yesterday while I was driving my daughter to her flight to Austria. Uh, oh. don't, get me, don't get me going on that, but um, anyway. So she is studying abroad and sorry, that's why I'm all bleary eyed, but I'm uh, tired and travels travel tired. But anyway, um, so we did have a nice, we had a nice conversation with Asabet, which we always do. They're, um, they're always real uh, on top of things. And um, I think their budget request is going to be very reasonable. I think they had a, what was it? A 2.9% increase, I think overall. Um, I, Margaret, did you, I didn't, what I didn't really understand, and I probably should have questioned them more on this was, so they talked about the reduction that they had last year of 400,000. Mm -hmm. And then there was the net effect of over and above that for this year. So like, I didn't understand what they were talking about with the net effect. They did what we had to do last year. They developed a budget pre COVID. And so once COVID hit, they reduced their budget. So their increase over the post-COVID budget for this particular year was something like 2.7%. That's what we're going to see in the increase for next year, I think is what he said. But it's only 1% from the initial, okay. it's only a 1% increase from the initial budget they had approved for this year. So if we asked them to reduce again because of COVID again, it would be a, we would be asking them to mm -hmm. take something similar to that 400,000. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Um, they, I actually plugged in a number for them on the spreadsheet because they were actually able to give us, um, can I just quickly uh, share this, the, yeah, know? and they always, and they always do. I mean, they're always spot on with their numbers and they're early yeah, they're and they, very thorough. Um, so they actually gave us, um, I'm going to scroll right up to intergovernmental. They actually gave us the, um, the capital assessment number. So I was able to right. plug that in. Um, but when they were talking about the assessment, the operating assessment itself, I think he said it would be around $72,000 increase, um, which is far less than last year, but it's still pretty significant. So, and I didn't, I did not plug that in here because it's not, it's not, you know, it's not. Well, I don't think it uh, would, 70,000 would be astronomical. I mean, their overall assessment, yeah. their assessments yeah. are Right, I think it's more, it's like a, a 13 point something percent increase, but they have an additional enrollee. So that has a direct effect on our, on our operating assessment. So um, I just, okay, I'm sorry, Stan, I didn't mean to interrupt, go ahead. No, I, I, that's what I'm saying. I don't think that their, I don't think that their operating assessment was 13% higher than last year. I didn't get that number from them. Could it, could it have been that it was for both the assessment, the capital assessment and the operating assessment? I was actually- well, The capital is going down because of the accelerated um, right. yeah, I th amortization. I think it was that Berlin's cost would be increased. Uh, Berlin's assessment would be increased by $72,000. I guess, you know, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to wait and see. Yeah, I mean, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll get it, it from them. I, that, Something doesn't sound right about that to me, but um, they, they didn't give us a copy of their um, PowerPoint either, did they? No, we haven't gotten that. I'll have to ask them for that. They're usually good about sending it. Um, yeah, I can uh, I can ask them for a copy and then share it. I'll put it up in the drive. Because then, so then, what would the discussion have been about four percent, uh, two point nine percent versus one percent, Margaret? If we're saying now, you're saying like thirteen. So the, I guess they said that they're. Their overall budget, though, um, so and that's a multi. Oh, their overall for all their overall their budget, income. yeah. That, that was the two point nine seven, yeah. I think. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Well, I mean, I, we only had one student increase. So we went from mm -hmm. twenty nine to thirty or thirty to thirty one. Um, right. So I don't, I don't think that would justify a thirteen percent increase, but. Um, all right. Yeah. Well, we'll look at it when they sure. present to us. Okay. Um, and, and Berlin Boylston Regional School District has asked, um, has asked us for a, uh, a kind of a budget primer, I guess you'd, right. you'd call it. So um, they want our feedback and I'm more than happy to give them, <laughs> more than happy to give them our feedback. I mean, things are, they, when I say things are tight, the town is in just in really, really good financial shape, but we also have to understand 
the tax, you know, that the taxpayers can't be disproportionately hit during COVID. So many people are suffering. So what we want to try to do is maintain um, this, you know, this 2.5% um, use of taxes um, increase. We, we really don't want to see those uh, spikes. So if we do that um, and we see a 2.5% increase in the property taxes used, it would be a net increase to the um, to the available revenues of 309,000, whatever this, $309,359. At the same time, in FY21, we used other funding um, for certain budget items. Like for example, uh, the contingency line item is a good example. That was $140,000 we used from free cash for FY21 only, that is not going, that's, we don't intend to come back for next year. So where we see these other revenue sources right here, 140,000 of that is from free cash. We also used about $94,000 in prior capital or remaining capital uh, monies from prior capital articles and put those toward Berlin Memorial School's um, capital project requests. Um, uh, they had a couple of things. They had the, um, oh God, oh, I think it was the gym, the gym floor primarily, or the gym ceiling um, over the stage um, they had to fix. And that was like a $95,000 project. So we had, um, we had put some of the prior capital funds there. Those are one-time funds. Those aren't coming back. Um, and then we also used $9,000 uh, for utility assessments. We used $9,000 from assessors overlay surplus which was another one-time uh, one time revenue source to fund one-time costs. Or we thought it was one-time costs until DOR has now required annual utility appraisals, but Molly can get into that when the assessors come. Or did they already? Yeah, and, and we Molly did already. said okay. that that was more yes. of, a, of a net gain to us on that. Yeah. Margaret, um, just like, oh, sorry. It's okay. Go what, ahead. what is your little red triangle in the top right corner mean? Okay, that's a comment. That is the that's the formula we use. And oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I just I can't click on it. I knew it was a comment, but I didn't know what it said. It's just your little old comments. Gotcha. It, it is. It's it's Sorry. just a reminder that we're yeah. trying to stick to a levy formula. This yeah. levy formula does not include um, FY21 new growth. So mm -hmm. um, that is it's something to keep this to two and a half. Uh, percent. Yeah, I remember. Sorry. Yeah, okay. I just couldn't um, remember what it was. Uh, then finally, the other um, offset receipts are down by $35,000, but that is money in, money out. Um, that's not something that's going to have um, any kind of a net, um, a net negative or positive impact. That's going to be money uh, paid to the electrical and the plumbing and gas inspectors uh, from the receipts, from the permit receipts. Um, so it's not, um, that's not going to cause um, issues with the budget. And then finally on um, reserve receipts last year, we paid off the, um, the ladder truck. So we used a significant amount of uh, public safety mitigation funds uh, to pay off that ladder truck debt service. So that is now off the, but that was not excluded debt. It was all on the tax levy. So that was paid off through public safety mitigation funds. So that's not coming back. So what that, what that, um, what the result is, is a almost a $200,000 decrease in available revenues. Um, and it would mean a $200,000 decrease in the bottom line operating budget. So. Which that's not very realistic. Well, I don't know, Stan. I, I actually think it's really, really going to depend on our intergovernmental expenses. Based on our level funded expense budgets and the, um, the estimated increase due to the wage adjustments and the 2% COLAs, I, I see this as manageable, but we are going to have to see what the regional school districts come in at. That's really going to be the determining factor. We were told, um, oh gosh, um, I don't know if, uh, if we had met um, after I, I spoke with the, um, the business manager at the school, uh, they were talking about a six point, um, 
six point something percent increase um, in Tahanto's budget. Tahanto, for Tahanto's budget, um, mm -hmm. and a two point something percent increase for Berlin Memorial School. And I think this is this is why I feel it's really important to talk to them as far in advance as possible, so they can understand the town's position and make and try to make adjustments accordingly. So. What I, you know, what we're seeing is, um, and we're seeing some signs of this um, with the failure to pay um, development agreement um, obligations to the town. Uh, we're seeing some, we're seeing commercial struggling, obviously, and we rely heavily on commercial and we need, we need the intergovernmental entities. We need our school districts to understand our reliance on commercial. And that we can't, the town can't be put in a position of overextending itself based on, you know, based on positive thinking, I guess. We have to be very realistic right now. Not to be doom and gloom, I, but I do think, Stan, I, I do think that um, this is, this could be manageable, but we're going to have to see what the schools come in with. I, I think... I think that we all thought this last year and that's why we kind of did what we did mm -hmm. last year. I mean, mm -hmm. we all said last year was going to be hard and I kept saying last year's going to be hard. This year is going to be harder. Mm -hmm. And I, I think we're all seeing that. And un unfortunately, I know you sound gloom and doom, but every day when I go to a meeting, I find more and more gloom and doom because and everybody thought this whole ticket was going to be over once this, you know, Mm. vaccine comes out and now we've got issues with all that and gosh mm -hmm. just watching what happened in Washington tonight is just heart-wrenching what our whole country is going through going through a bit of turmoil <laughs> yeah yeah um so so these are very I just want to I, I want to reiterate these are very very preliminary revenue projections I just don't want to um I don't want to bump up the estimates too much at this point. I think it's much more, um, it's just much more fiscally responsible to make, to try to uh, keep our numbers where they were at, at the reduced levels in FY21 until we see signs um, that we might be able to move. So for local receipts, who knows, maybe we're going to see a bump in uh, building permit fees and things like that. But um, I think it's a fiscally responsible thing to um, to take a conservative approach again. Well, I, I guess the one question I have would when you would paying off the ladder truck that's reserve receipts or offs that's reserve receipts that Which negative to well, I'm just this because one, we paid off the ladder truck. Yeah, this is reserve receipts. But and that really so the reserve receipts, the public safety mitigation funds would still pay uh, for the two police officers and one firefighter EMT that we paid on payroll, last, well, that we put in the operating budget last year mm -hmm. uh, for the payroll. These were positions that were added after Solomon Pond Mall and after Highland Commons came in. And when, so when we started yeah, getting, no, I, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I, I get that. I, I, I'm, I'm struggling with the why there's a big negative, an apparent large negative revenue consequence to having paid off the ladder truck. Because we actually applied $323,300 in, oh, I'm sorry, no, we applied 553, let me go into the, the ladder. We're gonna get to see this um, more clearly on this sheet. Here it is. So, I mean, is there a corresponding reserve. expense that's reduced because of that? Yes, yes, there is. It's the ladder truck. So the ladder truck itself was two hundred and thirty-five thousand six hundred one dollars, um, and all of that was paid from public safety mitigation. So that comes right off. Um, on the here's the uh, right. So that here it is so there's a court. There's that negative revenue in, impact, but there's also. Mm -hmm. A corresponding impact. There's also a corresponding it, number coming off the expense side. Exactly, exactly, and that's why I think this is this is somewhat manageable. Same thing with the um, same thing with the contingency line item. We're okay. getting rid of the revenue, but we're also getting rid of the expense. So, you, so the real thing to look at, if you go back up to the top, is that we need to live this one. We need to live within that three 
that 309. I think that we need. I mean, that's really the number that we need to live with then. I mean, if the other stuff is a lot, the other stuff yep. washes out. It has corresponding basically offsets, not to Pretty use much, the same yep. word, but. Yep. Okay. Yeah. We so, might... so, oh, sorry. That's okay. So I just want to, I, I really reiterate what Stan said, because I had already thought, you know, I had processed that through. Even though we've, we've paid off, we've used that 209 from last year, we won't have to use that from this year. So it's kind of there for use for something else. But I like the fact that we're now taking that money from Common, uh, from Solomon Pond and, and uh, Highland Common and actually using the mitigation money for what it was intended for, which that wasn't always the case in the past, we're gonna then be able to take and use it for salaries of fire and police. That's what you were saying, correct? Um, only the Highland Commons public safety mitigation because there is no more Solomon Pond Mall public safety okay. mitigation. All right. The yeah, Highland sorry. Commons public safety mitigation is our payments to the town um, that are meant to be in perpetuity. And that's why, um, and that's why uh, we recommended and we started applying um, a small amount, a, a small portion of those funds to the operating budget for those specific payrolls. Yeah, I think that was smart. Okay. Okay, okay I'll stop. Uh, okay, if I stop sharing. Mm -hmm. Sure. I'm stopping to share. Oh. Getting blurry eyed anyway. <laughs> All right, do we have anything else that we need to discuss this evening? I see Scott is here. Welcome, Scott. I didn't get to welcome you earlier. Mm, thanks. Hi, Scott. Hey. We, we were informed before you came on that you're official now. That's exciting. Yes, well, all the paperwork's done. <laughs> all right. Well, great. Does anyone help? Oh, hi, June. You're muted, though. Hi, Stan. How are you? There you are. <laughs> um, I just wanted to ask if it would be possible to get the minutes from December 16th approved so that I can post the reserve fund, I mean, the contingency fund transfer. Are those my minutes? No. Um, I don't remember whose they were. They're Julie's. They were mine. I have to finish them, June. Yeah. I told her it'd be okay to just approve them the next time, June. I didn't realize there'd be a yeah, because I can't post the transfer that. until I get those. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, um, that's okay. Yeah. Just if you once they they get approved, if you can just forward them to me so that I can get that posted. Okay, so forward. We can do that by email, can't we? I was we? gonna say, can, can we, we do that by before? email? Or no? Margaret's got a face on, so I. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm. I just realized Lynn, Lynn Ryan, uh, Assabet School Committee member, is in the audience here, oh. and so she, she could speak this. Um, June, um, June wants to attach the minutes. I think, I think that's important. Um, so when those are approved, or even if they're in draft form, if we could get, you know, just get them to. Well, no, you want them approved, right, Jen? I want them approved. Yeah, you want them approved. Okay. But well, can we do it was, by can email? Can I mean, Julie send them around by email? Is her question? rather than waiting until next Wednesday. Oh, as long as you're gonna meet next week, it should be all right. I'll just hold another week. Okay. Just blame it on COVID. Okay. I, I, Stan, would you like me to just promote Lynn to see if she has anything to add on the answer? Okay. She's here, she must have something she wants to talk about. I just saw her in there, sorry, Lynn. <laughs> Oh, Lynn, oh, you're Lynn. muted. Uh -huh. there. there she is. Oh. Lynn? Lynn? <laughs> Hello? Lynn, can you yes. unmute? There she goes. There she is. Hi, Lynn. There. I'm just an observer tonight. Okay. I just like to see how things are going for you folks. Well, I had a very important question I needed to ask you, though. What's that? Well, 
um, Ernie or might, might have been Chris said that you'd been on the school committee there for 35 years. Oh, he's a squealer, isn't he? Well, how did, <laughs> I didn't realize that they would accept seven year olds on the committee. <laughs> neither, neither, neither did I. No, so I started. I commend I was, you. For, yeah, I commend I you for your willingness to do that at such a young age. <laughs> I started on um, ASABET in November of 1982. I was appointed wow. by the selectmen to replace someone, the original that was moving out of town. But I've been on the ZBA longer. <laughs> wow. Well, thank you for your service. Lynn, were you in the audience when we were talking about how uh, Ernie and Chris and Asabet just always provides uh, really, really good information, and uh, and their ability to get grants is is amazing. Well, in all fairness to the other schools, it's a little easier when you're a Voc Tech. Uh, oh, to get grants or to do the numbers. Well, they tend to be business people. Number one. Okay. As a not that they're not educators, just that they tend to be business people. And um, a lot of the equipment, you know, like Perkins loans and stuff for the equipment for the um, building is gotten that way. Well, okay. Ernie, Ernie spoke very highly of you. Uh, yes. I miss him so much with Guy graduated. I miss that whole. Mm. I'm telling you, I, I actually emailed one of the teachers today for a question from uh, that I had, and they they're just the they're just so fabulous. I can't even beyond fabulous. Lynn already knows how much I sing their praises. <laughs> they do You'll a good see job. Them in February tenth is the day mm. of their budget meeting. My birthday, February tenth. Just so you know, I come with my birthday. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we got I saw that weeks, I had a meeting. So okay, that's good when I was five doing five my, my calendar today, I'm like, ah, oh, you're kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> well, somehow I feel like the budget process will drag out to my birthday in April too, Janet. So yeah, I know. <laughs> Didn't it last year? Oh, please no. <laughs> oh, it was way way past. Yeah, Might have been to my anniversary year. in July. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Don't right. want to do it Does twice anyone again else this year. Have anything else for tonight? Who do well, we have next week, I... Margaret? Next week, you have um, Veteran Services, Town Clerk, and Highway and Facilities. Well, Veteran Services, I think we uh, may or may not. Yeah. Or would we? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I may have to represent him if you do yeah. want to speak with him. So. Yeah, that's it, a pretty minimal, mm -hmm. pretty minimal budget. So. Okay. Anyone have anything, Mary, Julie? Bye. Uh, Happy New thanks. Year. Happy Good to see everybody. Happy yeah. New Year. <laughs> Happy Year, New Year, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, getting back to normal, whatever that is, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Such as it is. Mm -hmm. All right, well, hearing no other- uh, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Enough.